Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the webinar on how to present without notes. My name is Peter Jew. Some of you know me, some of you don't, and my passion is helping people become more confident and more effective in their spoken word in terms of presentations, public speaking, facilitation, whenever you get before an audience. And one of the keys to being influential, persuasive and helping people come on a journey with you is to be able to present without notes. We've all seen those conference speakers and they stand up and they read from their notes, word for word, from a script and it's just not as engaging. A lot of people come to me with my workshops and they say, how can I trust myself to present without notes? What are some tips? What are some tools? So this webinar, short 30 minute webinar, is just a few tips and models to help you to be more comfortable and present without notes. Some rules for today, uh, ask questions as we go. Please type in the dialog box, any questions and comments, take notes. And if I speak too fast and you miss something, I do record these webinars and I can make a copy of the webinar recording available to you. Participate by making comments, asking questions and think about how you can use this in your own personal life as a presenter, trainer, facilitator or as a leader. So think of a presentation you've done in the past. A recent one. Good morning, Christine. We're just underway. Think of a presentation you've done in the past or think of one that you've got coming up in the future. What can you use from this webinar that will make your next presentation or would have made your previous presentation really effective? So that's the way to participate in the webinar. One of the mistakes is just to listen and say that's nice and then not get anything out of it. I've just realised I haven't opened up my my webcam, so I'm going to open up my webcam. And that may, some people like to see me, some people don't. <laughs> All right, let's get started. How to present without notes. First of all, I want to make one thing clear. I'm not saying don't have notes. I'm not saying you don't have notes. So they do have a role. I'm going to give you five models and also I'm going to give you some tools if you forget. So you've decided to present without notes and your mind goes blank, what are some ways of recovering? That's the agenda for today. So the role of notes, do have a full script with you. Do have your four or five pages and with that full script make it 14 point font and all capitals and one and a half spacing. Otherwise if you need to find something and it's single spacing you won't be able to find it. I then like to have a second backup. So the full script is where you go to if you need to remember some data, some statistics or maybe a famous quote that you haven't quite learnt off by heart. Condense this full script down to a one pager or palm cards or a mind map depending what works for you. The thing with palm cards, you really need to be careful. If you have a stack of palm cards and you kind of have them in a nice order and you're reading them and all of a sudden you drop them, they're all out of order. I like a one page bullet point that covers the main points and maybe some branches of the sub points and the stories, the anecdotes that I use. Or if you like a, right, a mind map, that works as well. So you do, I'm not saying don't prepare, I'm not saying don't have those notes, but you'll have them up the front, off to the side, on the lectern and you won't be reading from them and you'll only refer to them if you need to. All right, so these are the five models. Tell stories, use visual cues, what are the most common questions that you answer in your presentation, use mind mapping or use a mnemonic or an acronym to anchor your presentation. These are the five models that help you present without notes. 
stories. Your personal stories are really powerful. Your stories will engage people. Your stories will take people on an emotional journey. One of the things we say is people won't remember much of what you've said, but they will remember how you make them feel. So you need a story that transports people on that emotional journey, that emotional roller coaster ride, and they'll walk away and say, aha, I can now see a way forward. There's light at the end of the tunnel. I now know that I can do this. The other thing with stories are they're, that they're your unique intellectual property. Yep. No one can say it's not true. No one can say that won't work because you've tried it. This is your case study. This is your experience. This is your client. This is your project that you've brought back on track. They're your unique intellectual property, really powerful. Second thing I like about stories is that you don't need to script them. This is about presenting without notes. I presented in Collie on Friday afternoon and every point that I made was backed up by a story, a real story from me going to university, from me trekking in Nepal, all the things that illustrate points, mistakes I made from a public speaking perspective. So the other advantage of stories is that you don't have to remember them and hence you can present without notes. Now, I do do a workshop on storytelling, business storytelling, and I have done a webinar on storytelling in the past. The important thing here is that you are not telling bedtime stories. You're using a story to highlight the point. So if your one hour presentation's got five points, you might have two or three stories per point that illustrate the value and the benefit of the point you're making. Use your stories. You don't need notes, you don't need a script when you're telling your stories, your case studies. Bring up some props or visual aids, some visual cues. And I actually physically bring them up the front with me. So it could be that you're doing a speech on feedback. Feedback is the food of champions. And of course that is from Ken Blanchard, the one minute manager. Feedback is the food of champions. And I spend a lot of time encouraging people to get feedback on their presentation. And I've got a 45 minute speech and I don't want to use notes. So I can bring up three visual props. And this is the ones I would bring up. I would bring up a postcard of a group of people. I would bring up a small mirror, a small handheld mirror, and I'd bring up a video camera or, in my case, my mobile phone because you can video people with your, with your mobile phone. So there's three ways you can get feedback each time you present. The first method is to have a friend or a colleague in the audience or someone you trust or maybe you're speaking to a group of strangers. So you arrive early, you shake someone's hands and you've got that five minutes before anyone else arrives and you brief them and you ask them if they will give you feedback, if they'll take some notes on specific stuff around your presentation, ums, ahs, your use of the platform, eye contact, looking at the roof, looking at the floor, whatever you want to get feedback on. Now I can expand that out quite extensively around the type of feedback you'd ask someone to give you. It needs to be specific, needs to be honest, needs to be immediate. There's a whole range there. The second prop, I'll bring up my compact mirror and I'll have a look at myself. And the mirror is a great way to give feedback. Really good for non-verbal communication or facial expressions. And some of you know that our Prime Minister, Malcolm Turnbull, decides that it's good to bounce his hands as he speaks. Sometimes he bounces his glasses up and down as if he's conducting an audience. Those of you who've been on my workshops will know that that's not good nonverbal communication. 
If you want to grow your gestural vocabulary, if you want to improve your nonverbal communication, you want to get good feedback, the mirror is a great way to practice. And I've got 10 to 15 minute contents on using the mirror and getting feedback. And the third prop, of course, is the video camera. So I hold up my mobile phone. Everyone's got a video camera nowadays. Most of us do. Hand this over to a friend and get them to record your presentation. The video camera does not lie. Ums, ahs, bouncy hand gestures, dancing across, dancing across the platform back and forth without using the platform effectively, all of that will be captured in the video. You've now got a file that you can review and coach yourself and give yourself feedback. You've now got a file you can email to a mentor or to a public speaking coach who can then give you feedback. And by grabbing videos over a series of presentations, you can also watch for improvement. And have you been able to eliminate those filler words, those ums and ahs? There's a 45 minute keynote with no notes based on three props, each of which anchors three points. Another form of props is of course your PowerPoint slides. I'm showing, I'm displaying my PowerPoint slides with you today. I'm not reading word for word off the PowerPoint slides. I'm using my stories, I'm using my, my knowledge, but the PowerPoint slide is a prop, is a prompt or a prop, a visual reminder. So please don't put word after word after word on your PowerPoint slide and then read it word for word. PowerPoint slides as a visual cue. You can use PowerPoint as a visual reminder or visual prompt. Do not use PowerPoint as your script from which you read. Don't do that. You are not a news reader. PowerPoint is not your teleprompter. It's an audio visual aid. And you can have your PowerPoint slides as your visual cue. The next model you can use to speak without notes, model three is, what are the common questions you get asked? And it can be three or four questions, I don't mind. In your topic, what are the one, two, three, and maybe four, but three's good, most common questions that you get asked. How can I can control nerves? What do I do if my mind goes blank? And how do I handle difficult questions? That might be three of my most common questions. So I'm gonna do a presentation on, 45 minute presentation on how to be a more effective and engaging speecher, uh, speaker. And if I answer those three questions or those four questions, I'm gonna make 90% of my audience happy and probably answer 80 to 90% of the questions that people ask me. Now, you know those questions. You don't need to write them down. If you work in fisheries, if you work in the Pilbara Port Authority, what are those problems, those issues when you go and present to the community, when you go and present to fellow staff, when you go and present to management, what are the questions they're gonna ask you on the topic you're gonna to speak on? You know the answers, there's your speech structure without notes. the three most frequently asked questions. I'm gonna pause for a moment. Are there any questions at this stage? What if the questions vary? And they will vary. They'll vary from audience to audience and that's why I mentioned uh, you're out speaking to the community stakeholders and I was in Collie last Friday and the people I were working with, the people they need to engage were the community within Collie. If you're presenting to leadership and management on a new idea, a new policy, a change idea, then the questions that management's going to ask you will be different to what the community asks you. So you need to have different answers or different questions, a different set of questions. All right, mind mapping. 
I'm not going to teach you how to mind map. I use a little bit of mind mapping. Tony Buzan is the mind map guru. You can buy his books in Dimex and all around. Mind mapping is a different way of putting a speech structure and it's a way of remembering it. So what's your core message? People who present without notes, without reading from a script are more engaging than those who present reading from a script. And I had three points. The first one is, well, you still need notes. They're your backup. They help you prepare for your presentation. And when you're practicing to speak without notes, you use your notes. My second point was I've got five backup models that I'm going to share with you. So in my point two, which is the backup models that I'm sharing with you, I've got five sub points. Yeah, the first one's tell stories. The second one was bring up some props. The third one was the frequently asked questions and the fourth one is mind mapping and I'll tell you the fifth one in a moment. So you can use the mind map as a way of illustrating your core message with the one, two, three or four key points and then you, your sub points can branch off and these sub points can even be stories. So you can bind your mind map and you use your stories as the content that you share. So you remember your mind map, you know your stories off by heart and that's mind mapping. A really great and easy way of presenting without the need for notes. Let me give you some examples just to be more specific. Let me use uh, the map of Australia as a mind map. And I'm West Australian, so I'm going to start with Perth and move over east and around and north as my, my, as my mind map. So this presentation is the keys to an effective speech. So I'm now speaking for 45 minutes. I want to talk to you about the five keys to putting together an effective speech. The first one is you need to do your preparation. P for Perth, P for preparation. What do I mean by preparation? If you've been to my workshops, you know I spend about 20 minutes on preparation. Know your audience, know your venue, and know your topic so you can plug and play. The next thing is you need to have the right attitude. A for Adelaide, A for attitude. Attitude is about wanting to be there. Even though it's a work gig, even though the audience may not want to be there, they don't want to hear your message, you need to show that you want to be here. Then you need to get your message right. M for Melbourne, M for message. Structure. Beginning, middle and end. Opening, body, conclusion. Powerful opening, powerful conclusion. What's your call to action? Your body, core message. And then your sub points come off your core message. Basic speech structure, S for Sydney, structure. B for Brisbane, body language. We've spoken about Malcolm Turnbull. We've spoken about the mirror. And there's a five-point keynote presentation that I can deliver on effective speech presentation, how to give an effective speech using the mind map, the five points of the major capital cities as we move around Perth. Apologies to Canberra. Apologies to Hobart and apologies to Darwin. If you have a bigger presentation with more points, you bring in Hobart and you bring in Darwin. But you need to be able to go around through them sequentially and there's the mind map. Let me show you another version that I sometimes use. North, East, West, South. And I remember that because of news. Give me the news, N-E-W-S, North, East, West, South. So let's say I'm now doing a 30-minute presentation on the biggest problems facing new public speakers. So you've come to me and you're about to start public speaking. And what are the four things I know are going to hold you up most? First one is nerves. People get really nervous. 
and they start to worry about what people think about them. The next one is ego. You need to remember with public speaking, it is not about you. You need to put the audience first all the time. So in fact, nerves leads into ego and being nervous is basically a bit of an ego state. What if you don't like me? What if I muck up? What if I forget? All of that is around worrying about you rather than worrying about your audience. Your responsibility is to worry about your audience. People suffer from a weak opening and a weak close. They start by saying, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's really nice to be here today. And thanks, everyone. You've been a really nice crowd. They suffer from a weak opening and a weak close. Nail your ending and start really strong. And the S stands for self-doubt. These are just mind maps. These are just examples of how you can use mind mapping to remember a presentation and present without notes. Number five, use acronyms or mnemonics, whichever you want to use. And I know when you work in the mining sector and engineering sector and the science sector and the health sector, there's that saying acronyms, damn acronyms, acronyms, bloody acronyms, because one acronym to one organization is a different acronym to another organization. And FX in the, in the medical health system means fracture. So you'll get on your x-ray form, the doctor will put FX FEMA and he's asking the x-ray guy to exclude or prove a fracture of the femur. You go to CBH, you go to the stock exchange and FX means foreign exchange. So be careful with mnemonics. But I love mnemonics and in my workshops, I use them a lot. So how do you start public speaking? I use the prime model. And I normally flip this and put preparation at the bottom. So think of it an upside down prime. The first thing you start is do your preparation. Then you need to relax. Then you need to immerse yourself in public speaking, do more public speaking. Then you need to monitor and measure. This is feedback that I spoke about earlier on. And finally, you need to get out of your comfort zone, expand your comfort zone. Prime yourself to speak. There's 45 minutes worth of content there with no notes that I can deliver because I remember the acronym PRIME YOURSELF TO SPEAK. Let me give you another one. Communicate with care is another one I use often, communicate with care. And this was to do with the attitude I was speaking about early on. People don't have the right attitude. Excuse my scribbly writing. So C stands for conviction. Do you believe in your message? First sale is to yourself. The A stands for the attitude. First date mentality, the one percenters. The attitude that I want to be there. R stands for responsibility. When you do public speaking, you change people's lives. You improve their life, you take away pain, you help them overcome adversity. There's responsibility every time you get before an audience. And E stands for the right energy level. Not too energized, not too flat. Your energy level needs to match the energy level of the audience. There's 30 minutes of content just by using the acronym communicate with care. Conviction, attitude, you responsibility, it's a privilege to get before a group of people, with that privilege comes responsibility and the right energy level. So that's acronyms or mnemonics, whichever you prefer to call them. I use acronyms quite a lot. Communicate with care, prime, when you're thinking and speaking off the cuff, rise with rise with confidence, R, resist time pressure, I, identify your point of view, S, use a structure, E, end strongly. What do you do if you forget? So, Peter, you told me to present without notes. I've taken the plunge and I've stood up in front of an audience. I've left my script over there on the desk, over there on the lectern, and I've forgotten. My mind's gone blank and I'm standing there with stage fright. What do I do? Here's some tips. Go to your notes. You're allowed to go to your notes. I want to share with you a particular statistic that's really interesting. Just, just a moment. One in a hundred Australians will stutter at some stage in their life. And of those 
people who stutter, four out of five will be men. So out of five people who stutter in Australia, four of them are men and one are women. Now, because I'm a person who stutters, I know that data anyhow, so I didn't really need to read it. But feel free to go to your notes. Distract the audience. Can you turn to the person next to you, and I'm going to give you two minutes, have a quick chat about what you've learned from me so far in this webinar. I walk over to my notes. I go to my prop. I do whatever I need to do to recover. Go back to your core message. Remember the mind map, the core message was in the middle, and then you had the one, two, three, four points. Go back to your core message. So those speakers who speak without using their notes are so much more engaging than someone who stands there and reads word for word from a script or word for word off their PowerPoints. So one of the keys to engaging your audience is to be able to present without notes. Mine goes blank. <laughs> Don't mention it. Don't mention it. 90% of people whose minds go blank, they manage to recover. And if you don't mention it, no one knows. Are you all aware that you have no idea what I'm going to say next? You don't know what's coming out of my mouth next. And nor do I. So if I'm happy to remain silent for that three to four seconds, you don't know that I'm worrying about where I'm going, worrying about the fact I've completely lost my train of thought. And what I'll do is I'll be comfortable with silence and I'll allow my mind to recover. And if it doesn't recover, I will move on to my core message. And the other one is pause and breathe and stay calm. In fact, if you don't mention it and you remain silent and you do some deep breathing, two or three deep breaths, that'll actually reoxygenate your brain and may help you to recover. And part of pausing and breathing deep, you're, you're modeling confidence. You're modeling that you're comfortable being in front of people and not saying anything. Even though under the water, you're, or in your stomach, you may be churning and your stomach may be going in knots, that smile, that pause, that eye contact makes you look calm, makes you look confident. So there are a few tips that you can use just to remain on track when you lose your mind. I lose my mind regularly, not my mind, my place, my, my mind goes blank quite often, but I've learned that most people don't know and I will always recover. And I've got my mind map up the front if I need to go back. What story was I going to talk about next? Ah, yes, I know what story. So I'll get those people to do something, speak to the person next to them. How does this apply to yourself? Write down three things you can use from this webinar so far. And I'll walk across and grab a drink of water so it looks like I'm having a break on purpose. Have a drink of water, quickly scan my notes, and I come back and I move on like nothing's gone wrong. All right, some upcoming workshops. Lots of workshops, Adelaide, Perth, Brisbane, Bendigo, Broom later on in the year and something in Port Hedden. My wife's coming up to Port Hedden in November as well. Uh, we haven't got those. We do have the dates, but we haven't got the flyers yet. Next webinar, ensure your presentation is not boring. What is it that those engaging speakers do other than speak without notes to make you a really engaging, exciting, present speaker so that people get that connection. 19th of July, same time, you're welcome to register. These are free webinars. So remember, speaking without notes being, enables you to be present for the audience. Your eye contact is free to read the room, 
to notice when people are falling asleep, when they're shaking their heads because they don't agree with you, or when you're getting that general nod of agreement. If you're focusing on your notes, following a script, you can't be present to observe and respond to your audience's needs. Give it a go. Don't not have notes, have your backup there, but the next time you present, see if you can do the majority of your presentation without the need to referring to your notes. Are there any final questions? And I'll end the webinar there.